You're on the punchline with Kelly Pavlik and James Dominguez. Yep. And we have a Technique Tuesday for the first half hour. Um, that's mine. You have to turn it down. Sorry about that. First half hour? Yes, first half hour. So, And we'll be bringing up. Uh, it's, it's, it's the top little button. See the, the two on top? The two ones? Probably the other side. We left that to Justin. Sorry, I left my volume up. I'm sorry. It's all good. Uh, so we're going to go over basic stuff today. Uh, Whatever you guys want to see or what, what, the way you want to explain. I think we're going to go over um, kind of a, kind of like how to check hook, maybe shift it a little bit, maybe sure. maybe uh, some of the combinations that you'll see Mikey Garcia use, maybe. Okay. Things like that. Some of the things that they always ask about that Oxnard, Oxnard style. So we'll... Knock some of that out too, and Good. we'll get to watch Kelly throw his bombs here in a minute. Streets. So what do you want to do today, Kelly? You told me your this is no. set up. You want to just start off with the basic checkbook? Yeah, we'll do a checkbook. All right, we're gonna start off with the basic checkbook today, guys. Many ways you could throw it. Many uh, different situations you could throw it in, but we're gonna start off with that. First of all, just start with the basic checkbook. So that's what it is. Obviously, a check hook, in other words, is a lead hook. You're leading off with the hook. But the check hook could be also be good if somebody's coming in. Usually, if he's throwing a right hand, I can come back and kind of hook over it. If somebody just keeps coming in, I can smack and step to the side. You gotta show them the rules this way. Be good on the camera, Justin. So if you're coming in, I'm just gonna I'm gonna slowly hit. And at the same time, I'm gonna move. But you're not gonna turn me. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna get hit. Yeah, I'm so just gonna, I'm just gonna use, he, He's just using his momentum yeah. too. So all I'm doing is, and I'm turning that way. So I'm back in. You see Floyd Mayweather, who's notorious for that a lot. He comes right here, and he comes back, or he just comes back and up right and hooks over top. Yeah. So he'll just come back and up and hook over top. So there's a lot of ways with Chuck Cook. But again, James, throw it. You can throw it hard. Or you can step back and pop it. Step back? Yeah. Okay. And then fire the check hook. A lot of different reasons. Uh, again, you could use it for a lot. It's hard if somebody's going to the, like jab into the body to use a check hook. Because that's the only time really. If somebody's jabbing to the body, it's hard to really check hook. But a straight right hand to the body, you can. Oh, if I'm yeah, if I'm okay. going to the, with the right, it's easy because I'm leaning that way. Do you remember? Do you also remember when you would kind of pop a little bit forward, like? You'd be a little bit out of range yeah, and then so hit it. Yeah. Yeah. You want to show that one? Go ahead. Okay. You're a little bit out of range. You want to hit it range a little bit? You're going to take that little pop. Ah! Yeah. But you have to be careful on that. You get caught coming in. Coming in. But, you know, and again, a lot, guys, this is all the basics, um, what we're showing you. Things that you learn. And a lot of this you have to learn yourself over time with sparring and, and even having uh, amateur fights or, or pro fights. But yeah, that, that hop in hook, there's nothing wrong with throwing that. And again, that, that comes down to a certain period in a fight where you know you can get away with it or you have your guy timing down and you know what he does. A lot of times, a lot of times when I would throw that or some of the more of an amateur do that do that a lot, but I would I would faint a jab when I threw that first. I would faint the jab and yeah. I just I'm not, I faint, ah, that's it. And what it would do is make the guy kind of step back a little bit. Exactly. Uh, now off that, you can always, what I always like when leaving with the hook is it kind of, what I was trying to explain before, it kind of catapults the straight right. Watch and it. I used to do that, I think we talked about this, like with Zartucci, um, even Miranda, a lot of the guys, the Miranda was almost like a straight out slap across the face. But I did that more so to get the leverage to fire back with the straight right. Can you do it? Yeah, so I kind of just... This way, I throw it, so he oh, his back. I threw it up that way, just to kind of bring his hands up, so that and then I, I come back that way. Gotcha. Yeah, you know, so the three, the hook for me, the lead hook, I can throw a regular toy, I can throw it like this, but again, I'm telling, what I'm saying is I had the leverage, so I had all the momentum going this way, two, put more weight on my back foot, and for me to really zing that right hand through it that way. So what did, what did you do with, with, with Taylor like that? What was the difference with Taylor? How did you throw Taylor and, and, and Miranda also, though. But I, Taylor kept a high guard. Right? I, I, I kept my, my jab. Yeah. 
jab the glove down like a smack. Oh, like upward. A yeah, then I came out that way. You want to show us how to throw that? Yeah, I do. I just came out that way. Well, yeah, they don't block it on how to throw it. I throw it, I flick it, and then I come over with the right. So, how did you, what, if somebody, what, what that also did is they tried to throw the right hand and get caught in that yeah, jab. Yeah, it's kind of blinding too. So, I'm here that way. And I'm right over top. So it was, it was big, a diversion watch on yeah. If we were talking about the other day about moving people in your right hand, how did you do that? How did you move them in? Well, again, they, a lot of times the jabs, and then they start moving, or I, I just come that way. And so sometimes you throw, you throw the hook just to move them. Yeah, just a tiny, yeah, you ain't got to throw it hard. If people are trying to get away from the, from that, they'll move. Like, you know, the natural reaction, I, I come this way, they want to get away, so they're going to try to step that way. And it's going to happen, and again, it happens over a period of time, of timing and everything else. So, I just don't... Oh, you caught the ice what you're doing, you yeah. right? As soon as they move, you're already going to go. Oh, you're right. And you already caught them off balance because they're in the middle of a move. And that's what I was telling you with the Zartucci cheater too. And if they don't move, again, I use that more so, again, I'm here, boom. Let's see how I'm, I'm turning this way. Yeah. That's giving me the leverage that it come all the way back with all that power and momentum into my right hand. And it's snap it over. Instead of just firing it from right here, now I'm throwing it first. Now look, I'm still, I'll show you guys. When I'm throwing the hook, I'm throwing it this way. So I'm getting all that torque from the front, my legs bent this way. But now look, I still got my chin tucked. I'm here, I'm still able to see that way. Now look at this leverage I got on the right. Boom. All that. So on, the, on the shot placement, where did you aim for the right hand at? Where did you like for the right hand at? I, I aimed for that. You didn't, you didn't have a certain spot no. you wanted? It, that's, uh, that gets in, sorry to tell you the martial art people, that, that, that goes for not. Um, I don't care what anybody says about putting dots on the pad or anything like that. You're not going to be able to hit a guy on the bridge of the nose when you want to. You're not going to be able to hit a guy on the right side in the face. It just, on, gets, it just gets there, right? Yeah, on the eyebrow. You aim for the target, which is the head. So, and be content with that. Or what else do we want? Do you have any questions, Justin? Anybody? Uh, Okay. What else do you want to tap into? Um, what, let's tap into something you've always doing. Okay. Over this way again? Some of the things people always doing. Thank you. I see a lot of people jabbing into the box. Um, in and out, in and out. I like, I like the way his feet move. Exactly. And you know what, we go on. A lot of things he did, going back, now this, this goes back into our conversation about best defensive fighters. And guys like Pernell Whitaker. Uh, moving too much and moving out of the way and being out of position. If you guys have ever watched that fight, B-Ball did a perfect job of keeping himself in position. And he even made some big leaps, which he had to because a lot of these, yeah, you know, and, and, and a lot of those coming from uh, Pascal. Pascal were dangerous, so he had to get out of the way. I really, were, I really like the right hand he held high because he knew that Pascal exactly. was like hooker. And he picked a lot of them up. You know, Pascal came like that. Literally, that's how he was throwing them. Throw up that way, he kept them up this way. He picked a lot of shots off. He took a lot of big steps back, but he was in range. He still kept himself in range to be able to counter back. So that was good. I liked, I also liked how he, he would keep his foot in the knee and he would lock his knee out where he couldn't throw a hook. He would keep him short, and Pascal needs range. Pascal didn't do it well short, so he would get in here like this, and he'd be working the body, and he couldn't do nothing, because yeah. he'd, he'd already be here. Yeah. It, he nullified his hook. And, and yeah, Pascal's not really good with that short hook. No, and he, he nullified that hook, which I really like. I don't think a lot of people noticed. And another thing is, I was really surprised how people shit on Evo on this fight. They were saying, well, he's overrated. He didn't knock Pascal out. I was like, he won almost every single round of every minute of every round. You know, we, we get into that. We'll talk about that yeah. when we sit down. Um, because one person knocked out Pascal and, and uh, B-Ball didn't, that don't mean anything at all. I mean, there's fights where you can just catch anybody. Again, this boxing, anything can happen in boxing. Yeah. That's why I say, like, when I pick my fights, who, who should win and how it should go is who I pick. But I always state that, too. I go, but anything can happen. It is boxing or, any, you know, um, to say b-boy 
you've got to be crazy. What he's doing at 175, he, he is by far the best fight. And I tell you, with better view, though, the only thing with him is dangerous because he, he gets hit so hard and hit his style. Um, but B-Ball right now, I, I got him climbing my pound for pound chart, and he's in the top five. Top, maybe really? top four. Yeah, absolutely. Especially at light heavyweight. Yeah. And now if he goes to 168, I don't see anybody beat him. The only, the only chance he has is Zerto and Benavides, the only two in that weight class. And now Canelo's going into 68. I, I think, you know, right now for Canelo, that's dangerous. Uh, so, I think it's just bigger. That's just a huge jump against a guy who's fighting cruiserweights, the night of the fight. Um, or heavyweights, as yeah. in Pascal's a heavyweight. Exactly. So, anything else? Well, that a lot of people, were, they were asking, I know Damon was asking himself about a lot of the combinations that Mikey throws, that ox, that whole Oxnard style. And you know better than anybody else that Oxnard style you train in. Yeah. I mean, you want to go over some of those? You know, when I watch Mike, I don't see, Mikey's not a big guy with combos. No. Um, Mikey, He'll throw three punches, four punches. He will, he will when, when the guy's on the ropes. Yeah. He'll fire the one, two, three. Um, and it's just not Mike, it's anybody in Oxnard. You'll see Adam do it, you'll see a lot of the other guys. Yeah, the big one, I, when I was at the fights in Youngstown last week, I seen a couple guys that neglected doing it. Um, they fought a great fight, don't get me wrong, but just, I think they could have made it a little easier or stopped the guys. And it's a punch that I actually learned from doing the Oxnard training. Yeah. Very simple. It didn't take a genius to come up with it. Um, a lot of guys do it, but mainly they're from Oxnard, is this right here. Especially if you can say that James is on the ropes. The, order, the, the regular combo that people usually throw, come this way so we can camera, is they go to the body and then they come back to the head constantly. And, or they go jab to the head, right to the body. I think that, you know, when you mix it up, here is the one that they do in Oxnard and that I think is perfect. They throw the hook. Again, and before I get into that, a body shot, the, the more you wind up, the harder you throw a body shot, the more time you give the opponent to kind of tighten his stomach, bring his elbows down, and be able to take that body shot. I could probably sit here right now and throw as hard as I can at James' body. If he knows it's coming, no, I don't. You know, <laughs> <laughs> you'll be surprised. But be able to take it. It's the shots. I've dropped guys with 12 packs that uh, with little body shots that caught them in the middle of a breath or when they didn't expect it. And that's where this is going. I think this is why they, they show this one in Oxnard. You throw the hook. You start off upstairs, so you come up here, and then he brings the hands up, and they go right back down to the body. So it's kind of, I'm not going to hit you. Right. So it's over here, and go boom, yeah. boom, and they shoot it. The guy on the road, usually when they're fighting, and you throw the hook to the head, their hands are up here. And they're not expecting that. They're probably expecting the right hand after it, or you to step back. Yeah. But after that lead hook to the head, when you, they bring their hands up, they're never expecting that, that hook back downstairs. And that's a huge one I see on the inside. I've done it. You know, a, a couple fights with uh, Garcia's, and it's a beautiful combo. And you can do it off the ropes. You can actually throw the, the hook upstairs and take a step over and fire to the body. But I think the best one is just right here. When you're on the inside, you just go and you fire to the body. Um, there's there's no way to defend so it. Sure. So like when you're on the inside, you just go. Bah, bah. I don't want to smack him for real. But, I, I, I yeah. Sorry. So up hand. here, boom. And it's just a quick little shot. You don't wind up with it. You tap. It's just oh. boom. It's just a D. You're just yeah. taking with it. And that, believe me, that'll, that'll tuck the elbow in. That'll make them lose breath. Um, yeah. Anything? Yeah. David says, show me all foot. Shows what? Show me all foot. His lead oh. foot. Um, his lead foot. What what people like to do? He kept his lead foot. He would keep his lead foot about right here, out of just out of range. So when he. Did, or, I, you keep your eyes outside of mine. Go on inside. It don't matter. Whoever does. He would keep his lead foot out here. And what he would do is he was out of range of Pascal's right hand. Because he couldn't throw it from here. Yeah. Even, and he would just keep it around and try to throw his right. Pascal was. He was here. Okay. He throw right hand. He couldn't even get off of his right. And what he did, when he threw his right, he was getting this. Yeah. Going back on that with... Uh, B-Ball's uh, foot, you know, I did notice early, and we talked, we're going to cut it over here, we're not getting enough questions. Um, What's that? Practice. 
Practice, practice, practice. That's it. Um, for your pad, just keep doing it. I mean, there is no way to teach somebody. Just experience it comes. Yep. Um, you want to stay kind of firm with your pads. Like maybe Kelly will show you. You want to put the pads on? Okay. Yeah. Um, it's staying with firm. You don't want to be too aggressive coming forward, but you also don't want to be too passive. There's a medium, right? And you really want to, my, my personal opinion, and I use it from a fighter standpoint, is you want to really throw and copy a fight situation. You really want your guy to throw combos. I mean, when you have him throwing four or five punch combos, or piece combos, yeah, yeah, it's going for not. Um, you're not doing that in a fight, and they do it, you know, so I see some trainers make a guy do it four times, six times, yeah. eight times in a round. Your guy's never going to throw that, and he might not even ever throw that in a fight. Um, do you want to show them what you're talking about? You can call it combos. Yeah, so like when you see a trainer, it'll be like, hook, step over, so hook, step over, two, five, two, three. Oh, God. You know, yeah. Um, if you got a guy on the ropes, maybe doing this, yeah. that's when you might get that off. And what, what kind of combination would you call? You're a trainer now, so. Me, I would honestly, I would work with the jab. I would do the in-fight situations. Okay. I like wearing the body piece, yeah. so my guy could really get the absolute... Um, exact cl close enough to the idea of what it's like to go to the body, but I work on things you know, I'm slipping the right, hooking to the body, and then coming back upstairs. I do the things the one, one, two, boom, 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 take the half step back and fire the two, things like that. You know, like if you're on the inside, you know, two, five, two, five, two, five, boom, boom, hop back, one, two, boom. And those are more so the combos that you're going to throw. I like, I was like, one, two, three, two, which is a good. Starting combos. Exactly. Yep. That's a good one. Uh, the two, three. Roll. And come oh, back with the hook. Okay. So. And, it, you know, simple things like that, those are what you keep the guy moving. I think keeping the head movement going, so if just screwing around like when we're taking a break, just have him moving the head. Uh, you get into it. Let me ask Again, you. I can't do it now, but I do like the body suit too because certain combos that I like, I don't like my guy. I see guys that wear the body suit and they have their fighter going like this to the body. Boom. Yeah. And we're going boom, boom. Again, you're not, your guy's never going to, if your fighter throws that combo to the body, then you got to have a talk with the trainer. And I got a question else. too on defense. What do you think about that slip? You know, a lot of people, when you throw the one, two, and they slip like this. I'm like this, but I see a lot when they throw the jab, they'll do this. What do you think about that? I think you get that, that's something I would teach in the basic. Because what they do, they, they'll come under. Ah. Yeah, you could do that, but that, that would be something that you learn over time. Or let your, fighter, let your fighter pick that up naturally. You don't want to teach somebody that and you, start you, off. You remember that's a big Brandon Reels type thing. Remember yeah. he would, spot, spot, and then turn? Yeah, but that's what I'm saying is that, that's a really good combo. That's something once your fighter progresses. But if we're, if we're going over basics, you never want to figure out that. As an amateur, how many, fights, how many fights would you recommend before you teach things like that? I let a guy pick that up naturally. Okay. Let a guy pick, they're going to pick shit up during training or during fights where they're going to use it. You know what I mean? It's an instinct. Yeah. Yeah. What do you think about a combination like the four, five, like four, five, three, you're working on the inside, right? Over here. Bang. Or maybe, oh, I'm sorry. Ah, ah, ah. What do you think about that? Really good. That's the tightest. I like that, but it's yeah. I was gonna say, start off with the left. Yeah, that that's not bad at all because no. and you could use, but I would use that again. I would use that not in the middle of the ring. No. I would more so use that with me being on the ropes, and I would have my body suit would on. You fall with the, in with the two. It all depends. It depends on the scenario. I, yeah, eventually I would take a step to the side, so I would have take a step and fire. That's another one when you're on the ropes, you know what I mean? Like, so you would take that step over. So if, if you're on the ropes and I'm doing that, okay. so I'm gonna work on, boom, boom, okay? Do it again. Okay. Or, or I mean, boom, boom, boom. And then I'm gonna take that step over with you and fire the right you. hand. You're gonna catch me before I can set. Exactly. So, so those, those are scenarios that is good. And that's why I think it's important to do four, five, six rounds on the pads. First of all, it's great cardio. Um, Second of all, you have time to, to repetitiously work with your fighter on certain things and break down certain things. And especially when you get to the, the higher level and you, you have film and you're breaking down and the trainer should be breaking down the film also. And, and you're breaking down film of what your fighter or the opponent does. 
And that way you could kind of work off of that. How do you how do you work on timing with your fighters? Like, no, I mean, that comes from far. That Is comes this fine? Yeah. You see, like I think the only time that you should bring the worm, what are yeah. those uh the pool noodles? Yeah, the noodles. <laughs> the only time you should bring those in is to kind of get you in a habit of moving the head. And those little tricks actually that we did in Oxford where I, I come this way, I come that way, you yeah. slip and then you come back and you hit them. So like even if I use these for yeah. instance, you know, you just go <clears throat> Yeah. So that right there, that's all those noodles should be used for. Uh, hold on, what, what else do I have to say? Um, what are you the, like the rope? Yeah. The, you know, when, when you use the, the rope, a single rope does nothing. Yeah, having a single rope is not doing anything. Because you know, I would I would make it like an X or a spider web almost. Because doing this is doing nothing. Yeah, but have it to where you could do lateral movement, you know, all over the place, and yeah, you're constantly ducking and weaving. And again, what that does is that helping you dodge a punch. Absolutely not. Um, but what it's doing is getting you in a habit of moving and, and when you're on the go and things like that. It's, it's just loosening a, your hips. Yes. Keeping your hips loose. Exactly. It, it does. It hits the hips really good. When I first did it, my shit was sore as hell on my lower back. I was going to ask you this too. The other night, I'm sorry. Yeah, we're going to skip this real quick. Okay. Yes. Uh, I can show you. What well, Wilder, Kelly, Kelly has more on it than I do, but Wilder doesn't set the right hand up like a lot of normal fighters. He palms left, throw it. He's not real textbook, and he's not real technical with it. And I'm sure Kelly has seen it with my guys like Zartucci maybe. What they'll do is, he'll paw. He won't even, he, he's using it as a range finder. That's it, he's just using a range finder, and then that right hand comes up and pow! And what he does is, he brings his hips far back. Pawing, pawing. And then he, and, he, and he lets it go. He lets it go. He sits down and he lets it go long. And his hands is not here. His hands here. But very good. Well, that's actually very true. And that's why I was putting the right hand down. Yeah. yeah. Because for He's Waller, taller. that's where he's usually getting it. And he has natural leverage. It's almost like gravity takes it, it comes into play. Yeah. He, he's not doing that himself. He's doing it because he has no choice. The guy's head is down that low. But what I keep talking about, you fight a six foot nine Wilder now. now, now. Here. So now he's going to be, and is he going to be able to get that same leverage? No, because you can step back, yeah. right? And you got a you got a taller guy, which me and James is about the difference a yeah. little bit. Yeah. And now you got a guy here. Instead, you go fire and jabs out here. Instead of down here, yeah. trying to jab where Wilder don't got to worry about that. How how does how does Wilder combat Fury? Like you're Wilder. And Fury's, I think Fury's Wilder, here. Fury's here. He's Wilder's doing, going to he's have doing to, things like this the whole time. Wilder's going to have to get in that mode of sparring and, uh, and, and hitting pads of here. Moving in, moving in, moving in. Jabbing up, jabbing up. You know, firing the right hands. So that's what it's going to come down to. So it kind of how, comes, Wilder's how, going to have to try to turn into a dog play. How does, how does like, because, um, you know, Fury throws different jabs. He's one, he has a four or five jab set. What does Wilder do? I mean, he's literally punching down. He's punching like this. Mike Tyson. The head movement, like I said, he's going to have to kind of turn it into yeah. a dog fight. Because he's doing things like this, and he's doing like this, and he's doing up, and he's coming up. I, Wilder is a good boxer for heavyweights. Yeah. I unfortunately think that Wilder, that uh, Fury could is a little bit better. Oh, as a boxer. Okay, as a boxer, and he's three feet, he's three inches taller. I don't ever really like to say it. I was a brawler, but I never really like to tell a fighter to turn into a brawler or, or anything like that. But, Wilder situation, he's gonna have to be that guy that's here and coming in and stepping up and fire, fire those jabs. It's and keep, trying to catch when Wilder goes back, to try to get in close enough where he can still reach him with an overhand right. Is there a, is there a um, would, it, would it suit Wilder to keep that jab right in the middle? Absolutely. Because uh, Fury keeps a high guard. And so Wilder just keep that jab right Body there. Body in here. And, yep. that, and how would you do it? I would just do either boom, boom. And every again, time, every time Fury comes in, yes, shoot it, shoot it, shoot it, and you're gonna have to, you're gonna have to fire at the same time. Would you be worried about Fury's power, no. or, or would you step out back? No. You're kind of in a situation with Wilder is like, all right, if I don't take a chance, I'm gonna get out box. Yes. And I'm gonna lose. So I might as well try to go in. You don't hit that hard. I can take Ortiz's punches, and I gotta go in there and try to land my big shot. Because that's the only way I'm going to win the fight is sure. by knocking them out. Sure. You know, or, or maybe points. 
that's what Wilder got to do in this fight. Or it's going to what it's going to do is going to turn into an ugly, boring fight where Wilder gets out boxed, mm-hmm. and then everybody says the heavy they, they piss on the heavyweight division again. I think Wilder has to go in there and make this fight. And if Wilder does that, I do see him being able to stop Fury by like seven, eight, or nine. Well, we have gone to one the hook, so we're on fire, especially for an orthodox. And you can even say that for so much for, for a southpaw. You know, boom, just move him. Yeah, boom. Yeah, just move him into it. You can do it with a jab, which I love. I love that touch yeah. jab. Yeah, how do you the, do it? Oh, the Darnell Boone. Uh, I see him trying to do it this last fight, but you just keep, you keep coming down. And I'm here and I'm here and I'm here. And then, next thing you know, after I do that a couple times, boom. Boom. Or or I don't even I don't even throw the left hand out. I just faint and come over the top with the right hand. Those are gonna be someone special for Wilder to throw. I think Wilder's still long enough where he'll be able to land that straight right so he could actually just faint and then come up top. Should, should Wilder look for more of a looping right hand to stop the reach? Absolutely. Yeah. And try to catch what because Fury likes to move. Yes, yeah. I'm sorry guys, I look weird, but I'm trying to stay in the camera. But Fury likes to, you know, kind of like move out of the way like this. So I think So uh, Wilder should should step with him. So, okay, I'm gonna do it since I'm taller. Okay. You're gonna be wilder? I, I'm gonna go this way. Okay. And I'm gonna turn like this. Now, you, know, you should be trying to loop that overhand right okay. in the back of my ear. My, yeah, right there. And that's where you're gonna to wanna to eventually catch it. So, he wants to move his foot with him. If he's yeah. here and he yeah, steps. So, yep. Okay. Fire it that way. And even if not, he's still long enough. So, even if you just fire, if I'm moving, I'm moving into that right hand, anyways. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? And now, how does Fury combat that if he knows what's coming? Fury is going to have, you know what? He's not. He's going to have to do fence he himself. He can't roll under or start, or start moving this way, boxing him. Fuck, I can't do it, stop. You know, here, and just hitting him like that. Fury. And then maybe moving this way and just changing up the yeah, angle that he's moving. Fury's like a lot like this. Yeah. This is- exactly. So move out. Don't give him the same look, you know. So, what I mean by that, don't move after you throw a punch. Don't move the same way two, three times in a row. You know, move this way, move that way, uh, step back. Something I wanted to talk to you about too, and I wanted to bring it up and I forgot, was on that b ball. I know we're going back to b ball real quick, but I noticed what he was doing a lot with Pascal. Tell me if you were a big proponent of this. Hitting in the collarbone, hitting in the, the heart, the chest area. I absolutely, now that I do agree with. I actually did it with a lot of fighters and I, I didn't care about knocking them out or stopping them. I started aiming for the, the delt, the side hitting, delt. He was hitting him in the delta because he knew his muscle there, trying yeah. to break the muscles down. Absolutely. And is that a smart? Yes, it really is. Especially. I know the answer. I just want to ask yeah. you what you think. Especially if you know, don't think that you're going to be able to knock, that's going to be hard to knock him out. You start planning for the later part of the fight and you start firing there. You know who was big with that? Marciano. Marciano. Yeah. You know, he would hit people. He got more kick out of right, hurt shoulders. He would he would hit you here and here. Yeah. On, on the dip. The, another one that, that everybody remembers. We're, we're done with this, but yeah. um, you know, when you go hook to the body, a lot of people will go for that. But if guys keep it there, I'm going for the bottom of the elbow yeah, to push, push it to the hip or into the rib. Uh, that's big. That hurts really bad. And you're, and you're hitting here and here yeah. and here in the forearms. Exactly. Like I would see like. A lot of times, um, you know who was real big with that? Oscar De La Hoya. A lot of people don't remember him doing that. But somebody had their guard high, and he would hit you here. Yeah. He would just keep hitting you on the floor. Absolutely. And I always wonder, why is he doing that? But then, you know, as you get more experience, you realize he was trying to break the break arms down. down. And you, you get a lot of power from the forearms. The, the part over here, when you're squeezing and you're turning over, that's all forearm. Uh, what was the one Rudy was telling us about? That was pretty neat. I, I didn't oh, know. Oh, the, the forehead. Yeah, with, you know, um, how was it with the glove? Bottom not to put not to put your glove here and not here. Yeah, or no, but he also was saying, oh, yeah. like hitting the glove at a certain part, like what's on your, oh, yeah. you know, either the top yeah, it or hurt. the bottom. Yeah, yeah. A lot, yeah, Rudy would say, like, a fighter would put his hands here and Rudy and, and Kelly would hit there and it's making the fighter put yeah. pressure and hurt himself. It does. But, all right, we're going to move on over, guys. All right. Kelly, you're a genius at this shit. Teamwork. Teamwork.
Yeah. Okay. New tablets. Mine, mine didn't come in yet. No, it didn't. But James got a new tablet. I did, but we ordered them about the same time. Mm -hmm. I think they had mine more in stock than yours, probably. That's why. I would love that. A Roman wear pink. Nah. It's supposed to be one of my colors. Is it? Pink is? It could be. But no. Um, well, let's forewarn everybody tonight that we will be done right around the eight something. Eight o'clock. Exactly, it's eight o'clock mark due to the fact of the internet connection acting and up. Whatnot. The weather is bad here too. Yeah, it is. Let me. Um, I'm gonna change the the thing here. But hey, I got a. I got some questions too. Um, it says no sound. Okay. Okay, got you. You know, um, the question I have too, Kelly, is um, I've, I'm hearing a lot about Bivol and Canelo now that they want to try to push to make that fight. I don't like it. I don't like it at all. I don't like it for Canelo. I don't either. Um, I was having this conversation. Bivol right now is by far the best 175. Yes. So let's let's really like break this down and go over it. Canelo came from junior middleweight. Yes, he fought a, a big middleweight. Yes. And they were close. They were close fights. Uh, he lost. Canelo lost the first one. Yeah. I had it nine, you know, nine rounds of three. I had it eight to four. The, close, though. Yeah, the second fight, I had Canelo win in the second fight. Yeah. But it was a close fight with a, a, a good middleweight. Yeah. Not a really big middleweight, but a good, strong, very powerful uh, puncher in, in uh, Triple G. Yeah. Now, now you want to go up a weight class higher, even higher, where you don't really walk around Nowhere near what the, the 175. No. Where this guy who you want to fight comes down to, maybe he only has to lose five pounds, because B-Ball is a smaller, yeah. light heavyweight. But, but B-Ball is a fantastic fighter. And like I said, man, this pound for pound list right now is kind of like, and it's bouncing around, it's getting all shook up. Yes. Uh -huh. But, uh, <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. no, I'm being serious. Like, like B-Ball, he, he, right now, he's, he, he dominates the light heavyweight division. You put him down to super middleweight. I don't see anybody at super middleweight. I see one guy in Benavidez because of his height. That's the question. And, and, and side, yeah. Damon said, who wins between Bivol, Zerto, and Benavides? I, I, but right now, I think Bivol definitely beats Zerto. I think too, it's, he's I, I think too, it's he's a, too a, static. Yeah, just boxes the shit out of him. Benavidez, I think that, that's a, a great fight, but I still yeah. take Bivol because even though Benavidez is big, he yeah. has been fighting 168 guys. Yeah. B-Ball's been fighting guys even as high as heavyweight. Yeah. So. Um, what they say, Esteban says, thoughts of Stevenson Vostick. I got Vostick. Uh, Stevenson's showing his age, too. He barely got past his last yeah, fight. Yeah, but going back on that, the thing with that, those are dangerous fights because Stevenson can. But, you know, I have to watch Stevenson in the last fight. Oh, God. I, I've watched Stevenson overall. He's just not good. Stevenson was like a, a young Mike Tyson. Yeah. Yeah, a lot of guys beat before the fight even start, started because, because, of of, because of his power. Um, if these guys would have went in and fought and then didn't get, be so afraid, it would have been a different fight. Um, Max says, Kelly, do you think Triple G was using prior to Canelo fights? Use, using what? I don't know. I don't. I don't. I don't see Triple G as a cheater. Do you? Yeah. I. You know. He's too small, man. Usually now, uh, you, you got people that know, and you have leaks, and, yeah. and you have inside people coming to you. I've never heard. And I think if there was any sus uh, suspicion of that happening, that they would have ordered tests and and for him to take tests throughout training camp and everything else. Well, I do know that Canelo, the both not Canelo, the Charlo brothers refused to take a drug test, and they both got fined by the WBC. They both refused. So I I don't know anything. I'm not going to speculate. Say they were positive but there's a, there's some reason why you don't want to take the test yeah you know what i mean so what happens if they keep denying it well they just don't take the test they won't they won't uh license them to fight in That's that in mean, that state yeah. they won't get that fight against william and one fighting william Monroe and the other one's fighting uh so were they supposed was that for a fight yeah that they, yeah. they asked them so did the fight get canceled the pre, no i haven't heard anything if they got canceled but it's for the pre-fight drug test you yeah know. Wow, I didn't even hear anything. About yeah, that. we just heard about it. So, um, Mac, I've never heard nothing on um, on uh, Triple G using performance enhancing drugs. Um, and hey, dude, let's not say that he didn't. I'm not uh, saying I'm not, yeah. but, but I've never heard anything. But I think if he was, especially with you know, like being a Canelo camp with all that shit going on, Canelo's if they had an idea, 
and they would know if anybody. I'm sure they would have ordered a, a mandatory test from Triple G's camp or Triple G. So, I think Canelo's more likely than yeah, obviously. I, yeah, but, I don't think that uh, Triple G had it. No, I, I don't. I don't see that about Triple G. I think his power is just God given. It was from no, the cradle. Yeah, nothing you could do. That dude hits hard. <laughs> yes. Timothy says, I'm not a fan of PED accusation when there's never been a history nor have been any refusals. And I agree. I, I agree with that, Tim, Timothy, too. I, I'm not a big fan of it. There's never been, he's never raised any doubt or any no. suspicion. But with the Charlos not wanting to take the test, both of them, either they're hiding that devil's dandruff that they like or. Yeah. But then again, you know, on that, there's a lot of people out there that nobody would ever have thought no. and nobody just ever asked a question right. so nobody would ever have known right i agree i agree and you know it just i think there's just so much going on with that with uh with uh with every i think it's it's like a witch hunt for drug abuse now i think i'm gonna start doing every show with a pen in my hand it makes you look it makes you look yeah max says his power wasn't as good in the canelo fight just canelo's good defense but there was more stringent testing his power was there canelo has a great fucking chin yeah. when did when Dude, did when he, did triple g knock out canelo in the first fight or knock him down that's his, what i was saying like you don't have to again going on that you don't have to knock everybody out every fight and you can see the over the punches you're effect, not you knocking say. canelo out man he just he has a great chin Trip, the last thing to, and kelly will tell you too the last thing to go on any fighter at age is your power that's the last thing to go exactly. timing goes first your speed goes with it. Your reflexes will go, but your power doesn't. Nope. And believe me, I bet you Canelo was fucking feeling like he was getting hit by a Corona oh, truck. Oh, man. I bet you he was pissing blood for a week. What <laughs> yeah, do you think? Oh, easily. I, I pissed blood after uh, fights. Fights that weren't even that hard. That, that just went long. I could have... Oh, shit. Thank you, Sam. Sam DeGrazia said, good show, guys. Yeah, Thanks, I don't know, Mac, but I, 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 just because he didn't knock Canelo out, no one's knocked Canelo out. You know what I mean? So okay. it's kind of hard. Um, I, the Triple G's power is definitely there still. Mm -hmm. Um, you can ask uh, some of the guys before that, and yeah, you can't not go. You can't knock everybody out. Shit happens in a fight. Um, and there's fights where guys get knocked out that shouldn't. Yeah, because it's boxing. I mean, you can't. I feel like Triple G there though, like mox is boxing. Hey, box, mox. Um, you know what? I'm also too. I'm also really um, I'm really excited about the Spence and Garcia fight. I know it's been worn down and talked about. And I mean, there's nothing really we can break down anymore. I think it's it's out there. Yeah, it's, I just want to watch the fight as a fan and cheer on, you know, my buddy, Mike, Mikey. Yeah. Um, I like Spence too. I honestly, I do. I think he's a good fighter. I think he's good for the sport. But obviously, I'm a, a Mikey fan. And I, uh, I think it's closer than people think, though. I think people any I think people think that Errol Spence is just going to come in and walk him down, and destroy him. Errol Spence has never walked anybody down, and destroyed them. Yeah, you know why I don't think that's going to happen? Because neither fighter does anything spectacular in the fight. They're slow starters. So that right there goes to show you nobody's just going to walk in and, and destroy somebody. Yeah. They're, they're both slow starters. They're both very tactical. It's going to be a lot of a chess match at first. Yes. You know, between the styles. Now I see it turning in. If, anything's, if any fireworks are going to happen, I think it's going to be later in the fight. Um, but right now, it's not going to be a blowover. Mike, well, he's too, each fighter is too smart for that. He's to too happen. smart. And, he's, and you know, I saw a breakdown. I don't know. Did you see the post I made today on that breakdown? Um, the Mikey breakdown? No, I didn't see it. Whoever did this breakdown, that was the best breakdown I've ever seen. It was unbiased. It wasn't saying, hey, Mikey's going to win. It was just saying what he does well. And it was, a, it was on a martial arts site. But they said, Mikey doesn't do anything spectacular. He does the basics nearly perfect, though. Yeah. He does the, he don't do anything great, but all his basics are perfect. You're going to get five punches at him, and all five of them are perfect. His footwork is subtle. It's not exciting, but it, it, he uses half steps, quarter steps, in and out of range, to the side. He just, he takes what you do. He takes your strength, your strengths, and he minimizes them. Absolutely. Um, is really that good. something that you noticed when you trained out there? Yeah. No, well, not so much that. Yeah. You know what I like with Robert Garcia? What he told me. What's that? Granted, I was, I was 11 years in, in, a, in a sport already. Um, but, he, he, you know, when he gets new guys, too, like, he's not going to change it. Because no. you ain't got you, – you give somebody 20 fucking years, and that's not enough time to change your style. Yeah. He said, I, I'm not going to change your style, but I'm going to sharpen – What you do. What you got. And um, he, he's really basic on – you know what I like with Robert? He teaches – the short little movements, yeah. the short little combos like that, that three upstairs yeah. and then a hook to the body, things like that, that the small things that could make big differences in fights. 
and, and that's what I liked with uh, Garcia's. And I, and I think that's where I came down with Mikey Garcia, you know, as far as as his dad and, mm-hmm. and his big brother, Robert, and just being in a boxing family. Yeah. They're really good with that. And, and I think that's huge. Well, and um, Tom Little. I wanted to comment on Oh, that. I was going to see if you Go wanted to comment. Yeah. You want me to read it to you? Or you, you no, you, you uh, uh, Tom says, a fighter using knowingly should face a criminal charge as unlike many other sports, people die in boxing. So you're knowingly putting someone's life I agree. at risk. I agree. I've been saying that. Um, it is it's totally assault. Do you believe it's a lifetime ban? You... Yeah. I, I would agree. I have to agree yeah, on that. It's not an accident. I'm 100% against it. It's not an accident. No, have you not. ever had... Have you ever been given an opportunity or a chance to use those? Has anybody ever came to you and said, hey, Kevin? No. no? But, but that's another thing I don't want to hear. Like, oh, well, we didn't know. You don't even need a sports nutritionist. If you're a grown man and a professional athlete, you're going to ask somebody what the hell is in it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You should. You should. You want to know. Not only because it's illegal, but you want to know what it's doing to you. Yeah. Uh, steroids kill you. Yeah. Easily. Plain um, and simple. I agree. Damon said, is Bazooka Gomez the greatest 122-pounder ever? I don't know. I think Manny Pacquiao might have been the greatest 122-pounder ever. No, sorry not to agree. What about, what about Lex Traguayo? What about Eric Morales and Marco Antonio Barrera? I, I truly think that uh, Pacquiao would be the... Not the greatest 122-pounder yeah. ever. I mean, if, if, if uh, a guy like Aaron Pryor was able to get in as easy as he did and Against fire... But yeah, but Alexis was 130 at the time. Yeah, but, but it's the yeah. same, you know, yeah. the same guys... The same kind of style. Um, Esteban says, funny how when the fight was announced, no one gave Mikey a chance, but as we're getting closer and people are really thinking about this fight, Mikey's getting more of a chance in the fight. I, I agree. I would agree with that. I think people I think people are starting, instead of having a knee-jerk reaction like a lot of people do, they're starting to think about it a little more. And I don't know. I, like I said, I'm not discounting Errol Spence at all. He is an amazing athlete, and he's yeah. strong, and he's powerful. He's everything that you'd want in a welterweight right now. Yeah, he is. There's a reason why he's avoided. Um... I just can't get over the talent level in that, that weight class, man. I talked to Josh Patton the other night about this, too, and we agreed. He said, after the fourth round, Mikey will turn the, this shit into Apollo Creed versus Spider Rico. <laughs> <laughs> um, Damon says, Mikey sees something Spence does wrong. James, remember, we talked about Mikey's angles and lead right. And you're right, Damon. He sees something. But I'll, but the thing is, I wonder if, if Errol Spence sees what his flaw is, and they're working on that, too. You know what I mean? Yeah. The Buster, 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 it's called, right? Remember the Buster, Buster? Yeah, man, that's what I'm... Buster, Buster. Remember that? And that's where I'm at now, like... The Buster, Buster, Buster. You know, and I ain't gonna lie, like, I'm, I'm, I'm not trying to be in that that spot to do... Hold on, I'm trying to... I know, but you got me thinking about the Buster. You ever seen that movie? Oh, yeah. Remember that? He's like, I just got my motherfucking Buster, 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 Buster. And, it, and what is it? It's a combating... It's like combating, 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 like... You know, but you know, Mac, they could have said that about Mikey, too, being a strength bully, because he was a big motherfucker at, at 26. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. What's up, Virgil? But, but that's where I'm going. Hey, Virgil. Um, we're talking about, like, the things that, that Mikey does, and, and it's a lot of things that he does good. But we're not talking about what Spence is probably picking picking no. apart or, or dissecting right now. Well, I can t- I You know, and, and there's there's a lot of things on that, guys. Uh, I will tell you, too. I, I agree. I, I'm not going to call them out because they're my homies. But I will. But, because he's our homie. But but that's... I would like to see Mikey go to the body more. I would see... I would like to see Mikey go to the body. I would like to, to see him yep. not stay in the pocket so long and maybe move his head a little more. And go to the body, which I'm surprised. That's so important, especially when he gets a lot of guys on the ropes or, like, on the inside. He does neglect that body a lot. He does. Which um, with his power can make such a big difference, too, if by going to that body. I agree. Could have made a lot of them fight shorter. Um, Vir- just before we get out there, Virgil Ortiz, his son, Virgil Jr., fights December 15th. And I just seen that they resigned. He was a uh, golden boy. Oh, yeah. I saw that on the video they were heading yeah. up there. I'll tell you one thing. That is one of my favorite prospects. And I'm not saying it because they're our homie. And no. we're, big, we're good friends with Virgil Sr. I'm not saying that. I'm just saying... He is the, one of the. He is the best. I don't prospect. even think we have to cover our ass anymore. No, no, but I'm just saying. Forward. No, I'm just saying. He, I think Virgil is the best uh, prospect out there. I like. I, Gab- I like Gabriel Flores as well. I just well. had to talk. You know, first one somebody mentioned to me was Ryan Garcia. I'm like, Ugh. oh man, Damon just asked a fucked up question. Thanks, John. I appreciate that. Yeah, you know, and hey, Tom said I would love to see Spence Crawford. We all would, and I think, and I got Crawford winning that one. I think Crawford's a better fighter. 
Like, who, David says, Harry Greb versus Adrian Broner. I got Harry Greb. Harry Greb would beat 10 Adrian Broners at one time. Harry Greb was the greatest, wasn't he? <laughs> Harry Greb would beat three Kelly Pavlicks, 10 Adrian Broners, two Manny Pacquiao's, <laughs> and one Floyd Mayweather in one sitting. And, a part, and the Buster, Buster, Buster. Yeah. You know, I'm surprised that we, we know that movie because that movie was not a big, like, it was great. Remember, remember the remember the porno remember the porno the porno uh, the porno customer of the month and he and the, he was in there with his thumbs up and the you never seen the big hit with Mark Wahlberg? Oh no. Yeah, you gotta watch it. When did it come out? Oh fuck! What what it came out? Ninety oh, seven. Ninety seven, right? Uh, the big hit. It was one of his early movies, wasn't it? They were hitmen. Him and Lou Diamond Phillips were hitmen in this movie. Um, Damon said, so "What about Spatafor and Mike at one forty? Mike at 140 would, I don't know. Yeah, because here's the whole reason. Spadafore didn't have enough to keep a guy that's smart as Mikey off of him. Yeah. What I mean by that, like, it would have been tough for Mikey because of the moves and everything else that Paul had, would, that he, would be using. Not enough power to keep him off. But Mikey would say, you know what? Fuck this. I'm coming. I'm going in. He, he can't hurt me. Yeah, he, there's nothing that he can do to me, you know? Yeah, Scott's a big hit. Um Max says, what about Teofimo Lopez? You know what? I like Teofimo Lopez, but he hasn't stepped up in competition yet. And that's, to me, that's part, and, and I'm sure Kelly will step in on this too. Part of being a prospect is getting a little better and a little better and a little bit better each time. Right now, we got, you got Virgil Ortiz fighting former world champions and in his what, 11th pro fight. Yeah. So. That's kind of a new trend right now though. Yeah. <laughs> uh, what is it? Uh, Kelly Pavlik versus Tex Cobb at Cruiserweight. <laughs> me. Dude, you'd have to get a beard just like him. You and him with a big beard? Can't do my shit comes in patchy. I don't know. I think you would grow in if you're fighting Tex Cobb. Just a just a <laughs> just a testosterone would make you grow a beard, you know what I mean? I'm fighting Tex motherfucking Cobb. Now, dude, if, <laughs> if you were fight, look, honestly, if if you were fighting a guy like um like fuck, I don't know. If you were fighting a guy like Harry Greb, you would have like a, a, a lumberjack beard. You look like Jason Momoa the next day. I think I'll go with the handlebar mustache. Like the old, uh, the old, um, what's his name? Um, uh, fucking, uh, what was the old heavyweight's name? That's what I'm trying to think of. James uh, Corbett. Corbett. Anything you before the fish. John Sullivan. Though. I'm not. The other than you know. John Mitchell. Sullivan. Um, White Tom says, "What about White Chisora? I like Dylan White in that fight over Chisora. I, I don't know. I, I that's kind of." Where I'm going with that one. Charlie Pog was Brock Lesnar. Oh, Fuck. yeah. Fuck. <laughs> it makes me look small. Um, um, I don't know if Kelly's seen that fight, but I did. Uh, what do you think about, what did you think about Tito and Liddell? You know what? That fight went exactly as I planned. Liddell could barely fucking walk. And I and I think it was more of a black eye to, to Golden Boy putting that show on than anything else. I mean, they brought guys that are one's forty eight, one's forty eight, the other one's forty four, forty three. I agree with you on that, but at the same time, I think it was kind of cool. I mean, they brought, they didn't mismatch them really. No, no, but they're both old, way past their prime, re retired. But and, Liddell could barely walk; he was limping coming in. You know, I was like, oh my god, this yeah. is not going to go well. Hi, Lori. Yeah. YouTube questions. Yes, Steve Z says, do you guys think Spence will be effective against Mikey yes. to the body? Uh -huh. absolutely. Yes, absolutely. That's that's where Spence is going to do his best work that's on the body. That's a very strong point, especially if uh, Mikey don't return the favor. Yes, and that's going to be hard because I think Spence may be the best body puncher at welterweight. I mean, let's be fair. If we're if we're hyping Mikey, we got to have hype Errol Spence too and what he does well. Errol, is, Errol Spence is good at dictating the pace of a fight. Yeah, he is. And he will push you and push you. And I don't think he has one-punch knockout power, but I think his power is jarring where it will wear you down. That's why I said at the beginning of the show. They're both very smart fighters and tactical fighters. Mm -hmm. And not one, does, not one comes out overwhelming and, and, like, real fancy and real busy where – Anything can happen where he can knock somebody out. Yeah. Nobody does that. Or neither one of these guys do that. They come out like a chess match and they yes. try to break down, they study, and then they start picking it up, you know, rounds four, four five, yeah. six. That's yeah. when they start doing it. Um, but I think, again, it's going to be very important for Mikey to work the body. As Esteban is a good question. I wanted to get to that anyway. Well, what did you guys think quick. about? Which, which, oh, that, bro. yeah, that was fine. Which is going to be tough too, though. For Mikey, if he decides this fight to really start going to the body, it is a little harder to go to the body on a southpaw. It, it is. is. It is. So, so 
for him to do that, he's gonna he, he's gonna he's gonna have to utilize that right hand over and over again because the left the left jab doesn't do much against hmm. the southpaw either. It does not. I say that all the time. That right hand, use it as a right hand and use it as a jab. Yep. And that left hook to the body. Yep. All day. See, and upstairs. That's some that's some street shit there. That a lot of street street street. No, but. With a southpaw, straight right, left hook to the body, left hook to the head. You throw a left jab against a southpaw, you're waiting to get countered every time. Because yep. the way their body is angled, and I know a lot of you guys know this, and I'm speaking to the choir, but a lot of people don't. The way his body is that it's he's away from you, and you're just missing with that left jab. Yeah, you, you got to use that lead right. Um, I love using the lead right, and especially in the amateurs, I fought a yep. lot of southpaws. That was the key. I always had an easy time with southpaws. Can I ask you a question on that too? Absolutely. I will. I'm True. Ask you. False. When you felt yourself, like when even in the amateurs, the pros, when you haven't fought a while and you feel a little rusty, did you have trouble letting your right hand go? No. I always had. See that no. for me, when I was rusty, I always had trouble letting my right hand go. Like I couldn't pull the trigger, and yeah. I wonder if that affected you the same way. It, no, it affected me because I felt myself coming up short or yeah. the timing being off. But I still fired it. Yeah, I couldn't pull the trigger on it. I would yeah. a jab and, then, and look. And you know what? That may happen sometimes because that, that's there's you, been I, times. Where I, I think I everybody it affects everybody different, doesn't it? it does. What did you have the biggest trouble with when you were rusty or when you had other rings? What was your the biggest timing? Thing? Timing? Yeah, and it was frustrating. Oh, yeah. And then, and then I would overcompensate. Yeah. And really try to push it, and then I would leave myself open more, and I would end up getting hit. I wasn't getting hit because I wasn't moving my head or anything. Yeah. It was I was just trying too hard to get the punch to land. And then I would end up leaving something open or, or coming in with my face and well, get caught. Me and you have a common opponent, a couple of common opponents in the amateurs. I was going to ask you about that. Would, with a, when you fought James Webb, I think we both lost to James Webb. When you fought James Webb and you would, did he, when you threw a jab at him, he always counted with the right hand over the top of that left jab. Did he, was that something? How did yeah, you? Yeah, I just remember him throwing like 200 Oh, punches. dude, he threw a lot of punches. But he always counted that right hand and it would be a hook and another right hand. It yeah. was just brutal. And he wasn't like this dynamite puncher. No. But he would sting you. Yeah, it did. And, you know, that fought in my, my very first open uh, match because I had a walk through, a walk yeah. over through the uh, state and I went straight to the Nationals and I fought my first open fight was against James Webb. And, uh, no, I mean, he just threw a lot of punches. And you know what? They had a little bit of sting on him. Uh, Damon asked you, Kelly, guys, what about the Charlos missing Nevada test dates? I think they should be suspended. Uh, yeah, I think it should be suspended. Suspension on that. It, yeah, like not year. taking the test is the same as testing positive. Absolutely. Same thing with a DUI. Like, <laughs> when you fucking don't blow. When you don't blow on the test, guess what? Yeah. You're going to jail going anyway, to jail, right? Yeah. And if you don't, you're losing your license for a year. Yep. Um... Hey, I want to say to Vinny O'Neill, I want to tell him congratulations again on that oh, big yeah. win. I was I was proud of you. I'm sorry I couldn't make it that night. Um, I wasn't feeling the best. But um, I wanted to tell you, Vinny, like, um, I'm really proud of you, and I, I didn't expect anything less from you. Absolutely. You know, he fought, He looked like he was 25 years old. That's good. He, you got to see how many punches he threw. Oh, yeah, I bet. Um, and I tell you what, Vinny, I know you pissed a little bit of blood. <laughs> I'm going to tell you what, he, what showed me a lot, too, was his heart, man. He got hit with some body shots. Yeah. It made my belly jiggle. Really? <laughs> and uh, he came right back. He didn't yeah. He didn't even make a, a face at it. Uh, hold on. I'm going to get this Patino. Oh, yeah. How many? Um, he got how good with Sergio Martinez. Sergio Martinez's footwork was good. Um, again, I, I caught up to it, though, and, and I'm going off that. Yeah. You know, the middle rounds. Yeah. I, I mean, I had him. I was over jabbing. He would move, and I would jab up over top of his shoulder. I was catching him with that. Um, I'm not going to get into what happened at the end of the fight, but I think that I neutralized his movement fairly well in the middle rounds to late rounds. But yeah. um, but overall, no, it was good. But he also did a lot of things. Just having good footwork don't make you a great fighter. No, he disrupted that, timing, though, didn't he? Yeah, and, and in the way he threw his punches out and the angles he threw it from, and he would kind of come up over top of your punch. Uh, he, there's a lot of things that he did well. Um, D Damon said, how many Hells Angels bikers would it take to beat Usek? At least 10. 10 little ones, 5 big ones. Yeah, they got some pet dogs. You know, fuck, I think growing up in Russia is just as dangerous as growing up in Hells Angels camp. Them fuckers... I'd probably would grow, rather grow up in Hells Angels camp. <laughs> yeah. Um, Esteban said, James, don't forget my question about Uzbek fighter on the under Bivol undercard. You know what? I wasn't impressed with them. The undercard of, uh, of Bivol... That kid, that kid was good, but he had so much. There was so much. Uh, there's so many problems with him. He w he didn't have a defense. Remember, right? remember the it. undercard, the two little guys fighting the Russian oh, kid yeah. and the Mexican kid. I was not impressed. He uh, had 
He will get beat by a good fighter at that yeah, weight. That he was, was not good. He, he might be exciting. I actually missed some of that fight because I was just so bored by it. I mean, they weren't. It was done for me to, that where I'm going to keep an eye on a kid. I just saw him miss a lot of shots. I saw him wide open, hands. And I'm a big proponent of technique. If you don't have great technique or good technique, I just kind of... Yeah, and I'm going, and I'm going to be dead honest, guys. If I don't think that a guy is going to be worth keeping an eye on, won't. I'm not going to be that interested throughout the fight, you know, especially yeah. when you have really good football games on that affect my Buckeyes. The Buckeyes you know. are playing. What's up, Tommy? Uh... Esteban said, defense is like Swiss cheese. A lot of holes. I agree. I just didn't see, I didn't see anything redeeming with him. You know what I mean? They said, oh, he had 250, 300 amateur fights. I didn't, I wasn't impressed by it. Just because you have 300 amateur fights does not mean you're effective as a pro. It's a different ball game. Oh, hi, Jeanette. Jeanette's watching. Okay. Um, also, his opponent had a great chin. He did, but he didn't have anything either. So, uh, you know, it, I'm not going to. And you know what? He, he he has maybe he don't have a lot of fights himself. That, so maybe he'll get better. But right now, I've seen a lot of holes and I've seen a lot of problems with him. And I'm not I'm not sold on him right now. Yeah, I, I'm not at all. I probably won't stick around and watch his next fight either. No, there was a question about Charlo versus. Uh, I do end up going on to be like a great world champion. I know we'd be like fuck, fuck man. But there was one. There was a question about Charlo versus uh, Billy Joe Saunders. If either one of them get out of trouble, we'll see the fight, man. Both of them have, have tested positive on some shit, or, or one won't take the test, the other one's tested positive, I don't know. Body Jack versus Marcus Brown like it's getting made from Pacquiao Broner. I, I, I would get Body Jack in that fight. Yeah, um, Body Jack, that's gonna be, I think that would be a good fight for uh, Bivol in his first fight at 168. Well, yeah, but, well, anyway, but Marcus Brown, he's been out of the ring for quite a while. He has Yeah, that's what I'm saying. When, yeah. when, that, when that happens, I think Bivol, I think it'll be a good fight if the Canelo the fight don't happen. Yeah, well, Badu wants to, they're but, moving him down again, too. Yeah. Let me go back. What was the one that we just talked about? Uh, damn it. Never mind. I forgot. There was one here. So he might, if, I bet, if they might not have as good a chin. Whatever you were talking about right before you went into that. Uh, the Buckeyes? No. Forget it. Badu Jack? Forget it. The guy stepping up? Tommy says, who do you have, Horn or Anthony Mundine? Dude, Anthony Mundine's been fighting 30 years, I man. I know, I gotta go with he been, on that. He's been fighting before you. Horn's just one of them guys that he can make a tough, a tough fight with anybody. An ugly fight. He did with Crawford for yeah. a little bit. Um, yeah. Then again, Crawford took over. But Horn's a big dude. And, you know, speaking of Horn and, and Crawford, that's why I have Crawford moving up a lot in my pound for pound also. Yeah. Very close to Spence because of he fought big guys and he's done very well with them. Yeah. Um, Damon said, Kelly, will Viking Herm ever challenge Josh Patton the Clash of Weapons <laughs> War for the Throne of the North Northmen? I, you know what? I love Josh Patton, but I don't think he wants any of that noise. That dude just that dude's the size of five Josh Patton. Josh Patton's only 140 pounds, man. Viking Herm just put up like 405 today with change. Did he do 405? Which, well, we're not counting it as four or five because we laced the bar with chain, heavy chains oh, and kettlebells and everything else we could find and throw on the bar. I think maybe he's on PEDs. No. If he's on PEDs, he has to have a talk with his dealer too. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Max says, I doubt anyone wants B-Vault 168. I would have to agree. You'd be almost crazy. I think Canelo's the only one crazy enough to want that. I was joking around with Lonnie and I was like, if Bivol goes to 168, they may have to ban him from boxing. Shit. What did Lonnie think about Bivol? He thinks he's good. Okay. He thinks that he should be, uh, that, he, that he's up there high. Uh, you know, let me, and let's get on this too. Me and Damon talked about this too, and I know we did too. Um, people are shitting on Bivol, saying he's overrated. Um, he's not good because he didn't knock out pa uh, Pascal. I don't see where this is at. I, don't, I, I have no idea. And like, like Damon said, too, the sport's not called knockout. It's called boxing. I mean, I don't know how much better you could look. I don't even want to call it, dude. It makes me sick. Like, honestly, it turns my stomach. Um, and, and if I did forget all the time so easily, like when I get home, I would probably go and get myself out of most of the boxing groups. I don't even know what good boxing group I would keep staying. I don't want to be in them no more because when I go through my timeline yeah. or when I go on my Facebook, I see like what the first thing that pops up is some of those boxing groups. 
and I see the headline, I don't even want to see it. No, I, I we've kind of avoided all of them lately too. Um, Kelly is is Roman is Roman done? I, I think he's been done a couple of fights ago. I son. don't know. It's hard to tell. Like I want to see him fight again, or another fight. Yeah. What's up, Tony? Yeah. Um, oh, and we got hey January, Jan or December eighth. We're gonna be in New York City. That's next week after next next week, right? Week after yeah. next week after next, we're gonna be at the Lomachenko Pedrosa fight. Our producers going. Our producers going. You're going with your family, right? Do I have time to rape you? Do we have? To? It's always time. There's always time for a raping. We'll send the wife up to go take the kids and get them a hot dog, and Absolutely. we'll give Justin a hot dog of her own. Giggity, giggity. Giggity. Pickle, pickle. Uh, Damon says Sparta and Fight Vol. I like Sparta. I like Sparta a lot. Um, Fight Vol. I've really never been really a member in so too much, but I do like Sparta. Um, you, you, you have some. You have some more intelligent guys in there that's not there to call you a fucking asshole or call you a bitch or a faggot. Every time that you make a comment, you know what I mean? Harsh words. But that's what they say. I know. That's what I thought. Yeah, I know. Oh, James, you don't know shit about boxing, you fat fucking bitch. I'm like, okay, I don't know anything about boxing. How dare they? Um, no, Tony, we're not going to Canelo and Fielding. I mean, that's a wasted effort. I think the fight don't last that long. Yeah. Um, we'll watch that on his own. We got, we, but hey, I don't know if January, though, we get to go to California. Yeah. And we get to see Mikey train, Absolutely. which is really badass. I think that's going to be huge. I know. We get to see Mikey train. I think you guys are going to love that. The fans, the, the listeners. Yes, we are going to film Mikey in camp. We're going to have our, we're going to do like a little, what was that? A 40, a 40, no, 72 hours instead of 20. Are we going to be able to ride go-karts and shit too though? He, we fucking better. He told us we could ride go-karts and go shooting, right? Mm -hmm. I just don't really want to be a part of that case. <laughs> so it happens in like... You did it, Kelly. You fucking ruined the go-kart. You brought your ATV from Youngstown here and BB gun. And, oh, you ran right. over the stop sign here in fucking Riverside. <laughs> you hit Mike, You made Mikey hit his lamppost. <laughs> hey, Mikey offered us to ride go-karts and go shooting, didn't he not? He did. He did, and that's what we're going to do. We're going to take advantage. But we are not running with Mikey. You're going, too. You're going, too. GoPros. Dude, we can put GoPros while we ride the go-karts. Sweet. Hell yeah. <sighs> Hell yeah. That'll be fun. I gotta find a way to soup up the go-kart. Darren says, Chavez Jr. still can't get it together. You know, Chavez Jr. has had years of being a spoiled, a spoiled brat. I mean, there's just some things you can't fix, you know? Um, Damon says, does Trinidad De La Hoya beat all active Walter Waits today? I would, I would say so. Ooh, I would say so. I don't know on that one. Maybe Crawford would give a hard time to Trinidad. I think a guy like Crawford beats Trinidad. That's, he'd give him a hard time. I know that. You can't say De La Hoya because De, De La Hoya, again, I'm going to go on that. Now oh, people are going to get mad. De La Hoya gave Trinidad an uh, ass whooping for a handful of rounds. Uh, seven of the 12, right? Exactly. And still should have won that fight. Um so I, I'm sorry, people are gonna get mad. Like Trinidad, even at 147, he was great for what he did. But he, he I don't know if he beats a Crawford man. I don't. And a Spence, a strong Spence. I will say one thing though: Trinidad had lights out power, and he had perfect technique. He was the most perfect he technique. Did. He was the most but, perfect perfect boxer I've ever seen with his punches. His punches were never out of place. Never. He had no chance. I mean, you get some he had of these a guys. He just got dropped. He'd get up. He's never been stopped, other than by uh, Hopkins got got when he moved up. Or, 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 and guy he, he got beat by Roy Jones and Hopkins, and if, when he moved up. De La Hoya now a five foot ten. Trinidad that's, was the same that, five eleven. I don't think Trinidad at one forty seven was just that. I mean, he, he's going to go down as great. Don't get me wrong. Uh, he's, he he's a Hall of Famer already. Yeah, but I don't know, man. I think Trinidad beats them both. I, I think that, you know, and, and I'm not saying I'm not saying yeah. that Spence and Crawford beat him, but I'm saying. It, I think they have a better chance of beating Trinidad than they do De La Hoya. I think De La Hoya was a monster. He was. He was a fucking five monster. ten, and he who could box like he did. I mean, he he showed that when he fought Trinidad the first seven rounds, and then he tried to coast, and and he still should have won that fight. I think that was Gil Clancy's fault, telling him that he had won and start running. I was like, what the fuck? But still, I don't think that you should be allowed to go back on and erase the score that you previously had. True, marked. it's true. My, uh, thank you, Melissa. We appreciate it. She's a great show, guys. Thank Miguel you. Patino says, is it true you almost fought Andre Ward at one point? Yeah, it was actually when I had the reason, one of the big reasons behind retiring earlier than I did 
was that we had a fight that was just about signed. And then Andre Ward, unfortunately, that's when he had that shoulder injury and he had that time off. Yeah. And there was no other fight out there for me. And not being mean, I, I fought Scott Sigmund, R- 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 Rosinski, and Aaron Jaco. And those were, that was probably who I was going to fight again. And I just wasn't doing it no more. I agree. Uh, Kelly, Kelly versus Dana White. <laughs> you would you would fucking you'd put a muzzle on that motherfucker. Dana might know some little shit though. You know, he, he's he, been involved he, in that he UFC. Boxed. He don't know. He he, was, he boxed, but now I don't know. I'll box his fucking I'll ears box. off. Mock his fucking face. I'll punch him in the back of the teeth. <laughs> I don't know. Scott asked that, but no, Max is perfect punches. I, I agree. I, I thought Trinidad was one of the most perfect punchers I've ever seen. Like nothing was ever out of place with him. Mayweather is the absolute sharpest puncher timing wise this era. Who said Agreed? that? Damon. Uh, I would say Pacquiao maybe. Sharpest uh, timing. Pacquiao maybe. I can I, I think. I think Mayweather was too. I mean, as far as maybe timing, but I, sharp punches though. I Pacquiao, would, Pacquiao was just so fast, and he, he was, was just sharp. so, and, and he was so unexpected when he threw, and how fast he was able to hop in with his feet. Yeah. People forget that. Like Pacquiao is in and out. That what he did, that bouncing yeah. in and out was yeah. fast. And then he threw like four or five punches coming in. I would say Floyd with timing, but I would say, like, for me, I think per, sharper punches was Manny. But can you contribute uh, Floyd Mayweather's timing to just his punches? Or can you say that it wasn't his punches that had perfect timing? It was the other things that set up the punches, like the shoulder roll Whoa. and the. the the and leverage. then the constant luring you in, luring yes. you in and making you miss and then firing a, a punch. I think it was more so making you make the mistake and off balance and out of position and him countering it that made the punches well, su- such perfect timing. Like, well, one time I, I remember when Oscar and Floyd fought and I remember um, some one of the one of the things that most fighters are two steps ahead of you. Floyd's four or five steps ahead of you. Yeah. He already he has his game plan laid completely out for the next three rounds. But the way to beat Floyd is the way to beat Floyd was to was to throw off, be off timing, to, to not fall into timing, to be all over the place and, and crowd him. And I don't know why a lot of people didn't do it. The only ones that could do it was Maidana had done it. Mm-hmm. Uh, Maidana had Castillo, managed to fit, the first Castillo fight. Castillo did it. Um, even Hes- Jesus Chavez had a nice game plan going. But that was the way to beat him. And, but the problem is... If you capitalized it the first time and you didn't and you tried it again, he already had you figured out. Yeah. You could never do it a second time. And I think with a lot of the guys, it's hard to do that. I don't think they were in shape enough to when they fought Mayweather. Yeah. I think they expected that it wasn't going to be many punches thrown because Mayweather didn't fire that many punches. Um, but a lot of the guys couldn't keep that up against Mayweather either. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Brian Smith, I beat Kelly back in the day. Streets. Did you? Did he? No. Oh. Um, David says, "What is Crawford?" Bruce's do- cousin. Okay. What does Crawford do that that great that makes him gifted for special? And he's another very smart fighter. He's another one. The first two rounds breaks you down, figures you out, and then he, his skill level, um, Crawford's skills. Punches are, hard. Yeah, he, well, he hits hard. He hits hard enough to really keep you at bay and, and make you realize not to mess up. Um, he has a real mean streak. He has, which he you, you can't understate that. He wants to hurt you. He doesn't want you to finish on your feet, uh, which you got to respect it. You can. I mean, he's becoming another Mayweather. Like, for me, when I used to always go, oh, well, I think he can be beat if you just yeah. do this. And then people, you get sitting there and he just dismantles yeah. people. Amanda says, hi, loves. Glad to see you guys. Nice to see you too, Amanda. Right, hi, Amanda. Uh, Max says, does that come from the nervous system, punching speed and power? If so, how can you strengthen it? You can't. You can't. You can improve a little bit, but... It's either you got it or you don't. When it comes from power and speed, yeah. you either you have it or you don't. I mean, unless you go back, I mean, I think eventually people will start being able to with the progression of technology and, yeah, but for, and sports science and, and everything else. Yes. I think, like, you really have to train a guy to how to throw punches and change his whole form. Uh, I don't think it will work for a fighter that's already pro or that's been fighting for a, yes. a period of time. I think with young kids that you could actually start getting into it. But yeah, for the most part, as of right now, you either got it in the cradle or you don't. That's you know, it. and he's asking to come. It comes from nervous system. No, uh, it comes from twitch muscle fibers in your body. They're the twitch yeah. muscle fibers is where that speed and power comes from. And and getting to scientifically on this, some people's twitch muscle fibers. Everybody has long muscle fibers, and they have twitch muscle yeah. fibers. 
And um, the twitch muscle fibers, for some people, fire more readily than the other mu the other fibers. And so that's what allows speed and power. Like is, your sprinters they are usually twitch, fat, twitch, fast muscle. twitch muscle. Your long guy, your long distance sprinters are long muscle. Are that long twitch, those long uh, Big muscle. Fibers. The, the, the main muscle. Uh, where's the rule going here? Um, D Dana said. Uh, oh, and, and the nervous system. What that really has to deal with is that that's your reflex. That's your flight. That's your flight or fi fight or yeah, flight. Yeah, and, and reflexes yes. uh, come off of that too, and that's where we got in that one time with the conversation. Uh, PEDs do help with with that too. They can. They de absolutely make you more help aware. with the reflexes. A lot of times though, with the defense too, it's doing the same thing over and over again in camp. It's in, in your training. You know, you're working yeah. on defense constantly. Everything, and you, you can answer this better than anybody else, Kelly. When you when you fought, did the fight slow down for you as opposed to your first 20 fights Absolutely. as opposed to your last 40? Yeah. And that's what I was asking. Like, you saw the punches better coming, and that's what's experience. You could you slipped a punch in your 30th fight that you could slip in your 15th. Was, the pros was like starting all over again from the amateurs. The amateurs, you go in your first 10 amateur fights, oh, it was God. just like a blink of an eye, and it yes. was over. And then as you progress... In the amateur boxing, the next fifty, you're like fuck. You kind of slowed down. You know, it's still fast paced, but it slowed down. Yeah. And then you turn pro, and then it's kind of like it starts all over again. And I don't know if it's because of the anxiety level. Yep. Uh, Dana Jones says Spence throws twenty more punches around than Bud. He does, but he doesn't throw as effective punches as Crawford. And it's it's not the quantity; it's quality. And this one goes on to the conversation that me and James had with the. Uh, Gary Russell and, and uh, Leo Leo Santa Cruz. Which Gary Russell backed out of. <clears throat> but going on that, when you fight a guy that throws a lot of punches as compared to a guy who's really slick and, and tactical, yeah. that actually sometimes can make you not throw as many punches. When you're getting countered. When you're getting countered and hit and when you have a guy moving certain ways at certain angles that he's moving to where you're in your, your head you can't pull the trigger. Yeah. So we don't know that the punches per round don't matter. I just, um, I, I, I personally think I think Leo's stronger, a lot phys physically stronger and hits harder. So that's, that makes a difference too. Um, do you guys think Fury, Julius, said, Kelly, I'll ask you, do you think Fury is ready for this weekend's fight or is it too much too soon? No, he's been no, a pro I for a long time. He's a world he's champion. Ready. He stands a good chance in it, guys. Yes. I'm still going with Wilder, but this is a fight where, where it's out of, not out of the question or not yeah. surprising if, if uh, Fury wins the fight. But I just, I think that, yeah, you know, Wilder will win. Damon has a good question for you, Kelly. What are the advantages of thumbless gloves? Are there any? I don't, I don't think there is really at all. I think it's, I, I, they, I, they, they built them so you wouldn't break your thumb. A lot of times on the older yeah. gloves, your thumb would get jammed. And it would keep a thumb out of your opponent's eye. I, I don't know. I, but, I think that a thumbless uh, or a... Uh, yeah, thumbless glove. I think it set you back in a fight. I think you could hurt your thumb more, break it. Uh, I don't know. I think when you, when the glove, when you have a glove that keeps it to your hand, it keeps your your fist tighter. Yeah. And where you could actually throw a harder. That's punch. why you enjoy the Reyes. Yes. Because it, it, the thumb locks kind of like this on the Reyes. It's funny, like yeah. perfect. I like it. I like the way it fit the outside of. My yeah. Well, oh, I like the. You know what I liked on it? The little oval. I don't know if it's me, but the oval was my favorite part of the Reyes glove. I got a funny one for Damon. He goes, well, he goes, Kelly, did you wrap each hand differently and for different reasons as you got better later in your career? You didn't wrap them? Or wrap both hands the same every fight. I did. If, if it wasn't a sparring day, I would, I would wrap my hands. Um, the funny part with that, no, I wrapped each hand the same. <clears throat> and I had hand injuries, but then that's... But before all the shit came out, I'm talking about in my amateur days, like in yeah. 97, 98. Yeah. Uh, Jack Lowe was a part of this. I used to have to wear maxi pads. Oh, yeah. That's, that's put, old. Yeah. yeah. I put the maxi yep. pads on. And then on. the wrap the over. That's and old. I had to go into a store one time and buy them. And I heard a funny story that Jack mentioned that he went into the store. Yeah. And a woman, like, called him out on it. She, like, pulled it up She to the next lady at the register. Yeah. I was like, oh, how nice of him. Look what he does for his wife. She buys these for her. And he's like, no, nah, those are for my fighters. And nobody believed him, you know what I mean? He's like, those are, you know. No, and, uh, I, we used to do the maxi pads too, the pink ones. Yeah. And you put it inside there and wrap up. Yeah. But the only problem with the maxi pads was when you get to the gym and you didn't have other ones because, like, after three days, they, they wore really out. They really fucking wore, yeah, they yeah. broke apart. And then, especially, like, on the end, the pinky, where I had yep. most of my injuries. Injuries. And uh, then uh, the Everlast came out with the gel ones. Uh, but no, I, I wrapped my hands the same. And then, of course, when I sparred, and the, the higher I got in my career, and more meaningful fights, yeah. you know, my trainer wrapped them. Yeah, yeah. I mean, even 
I mean, Robert, you never wrapped your own hands, even in training. No, he no. always took care of your hands, and yeah. he's good for that. He'll wrap hands all day. And I, do you, I mean, I, I, you know who I think the best hand wrapper ever is? I think Joe Goosen is. Oh, did you hear about that? Joe Goosen's training Lipponets now. Oh, yeah? That's huge. That's, that's, big. that's gonna make Lipponets a monster. But I think Joe Goosen, I like the way Ricky Funes tra wraps. I like the way Rudy Hernandez, and I like the way Robert. Yeah, Robert's really good. Robert's really good. But I'm gonna tell you for a trainer who's not being mentioned up there, and I'm not Joe, just saying this because he was my old trainer. He is. One thing I give Jack Lowe credit. Oh, Jack Lowe was a fucking he great dragged, hand wrapper. Dude, he wrapped hands. He did. I mean, I, they, they wrapped the hands good. Um, Kelly, okay. Uh, Dana says he has a higher contact percentage. Also, Gary's wife just had twins, so I understand. But both will duck Rigo. Sugar, why will they duck R Rigandale? I, we're not even going to see Rigandale fight, man. I don't know. I don't think anybody's ducking Rigandale. Is Rigandale, Rigo, uh relevant right now? Is nah, he I don't think he's relevant is, is he even no. in camp? I don't even know. Um, I think, I don't know, man. I think Rigandale's damaged goods after, after. A, I don't think he got beat that bad. I think he was embarrassed pretty fucking bad. All that shit he was talking. We were there at the. Hurt. We were up. He, he, dude, he got tap yeah, danced he did, on. He didn't get beat up, beat up. Oh, but he got tap danced on more than he was ever, more than has ever happened to him. Believe me, a guy like Canelo, believe it or not, took a lot more damage yeah. than Rigondeaux did against Lomo. He did, but he was not embarrassed the same way. Yeah. All um, right. Uh, oh, people say Tito stacked his wraps. No, how much of an advantage is that? Um, let me explain, Mac, how, how, what happened with the Tito hand wraps. A lot of people say he stacked his wraps. He did not. Back in, in certain commissions back in the 90s, they would get the tape, and his father would twist the tape really tight. The twist, twist, and they'd twist it really tight, and they'd put the tape on. Well, what that did was that tape became like a cord, and it became solid. I think they have frowned on it and banned that out now, but he was doing that, and a lot of people are like, well, that's illegal. But why wouldn't other people do it either, though? Just something that was done back in the day in Puerto Rico. Puerto Rico was huge for that, you know? Oh, um, other fighters did do it. Um... We are a week away. Who, who, who guys you taking? About I'm taking Wilder. You got? Yeah, I got Wilder. Um, you guys ever have situations on a broken glove or a broken uh, that has become uncomfortable? I never have. You when you use, I'm sure with Kelly using quality oh, gloves. Oh, when when I think when Reyes first switched over to when they shrunk the the oval, the Reyes, yeah, the oval Reyes logo. Yeah. Uh, that came off my gloves, and I was absolutely pissed because <laughs> you're you talking really? about it. No, yeah, that because. Was the best part. That's what we loved about the Reyes clubs. Me and James, a lot of shit like with the Rocky Four, the punching machine that told you how hard you punch. Yeah, that was our and favorite. like the the Reyes gloves, the white thumb underneath, the oval. Yeah. Um, I used to actually draw them on my so did I. Oh, shitty cheap gloves. gloves. Yep. The, the cheap ones. I did too. I even wrote yeah. Echo Echo Mexico. Heck yeah. Yeah. So made in Mexico. And when uh, I'm like, did we just become best friends? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and dude, I think it was one of my early fights, and it yep. was on TV. Yeah. Um, the Reyes sign came because it peeled was, off. Yeah, it peeled off and it flew, and I was kind of like, motherfucker. <laughs> it was a more aesthetic it. thing. Yeah. But also, what I laughed about was when I'd we, rather my shoe come untied and me trip over it and land on my head than that Reyes logo come well, off. Well, me and Kelly, I think uh, we were doing a, our, one of our, we were talking year. This was five, six years ago, mm -hmm. and I said. Yeah, when I was a kid, I used to get a tear, I used to cut open, cut out a cardboard belt, and I would write a WBC symbol yeah. in it and make my. And Kelly said, "I did that too." I, said, I did it with the IBF belt. I, I drew an eagle <laughs> on a weightlifting. My dad's weightlifting. I belt. did that one too. And the yeah. eagles all crooked. Yeah, it was all. Fucking, it was all off centered. <laughs> coloring. I was coloring my belt red and shit. I wish I could draw you the eagle. <laughs> Dude, my eagle had a crooked beak and shit. I got a piece of paper. I'll draw the eagle real quick. It was IBF eagle, and uh, it was on my dad's weightlifting belt. Uh, well, what, Enrel Vargas says, will I see you in Dallas March 16th? You fucking better believe yeah. it. Okay. Um, well, we got, well, let's answer Joel because we got to shut down. Shop. HBO talked about Canelo stacking his wraps and it's legal in Vegas. That was like, well, if it's legal in the commission, it's legal. It's legal then. But... Do, do, is, it, is it fair? Probably not, but it's legal. All right. But yeah. Riggle, well, Riggle's moving to 26. That's not going to happen. Riggle's on until Riggle's we find out what's man. more going on. I, I don't think it's yeah. I mean, I don't think that he should have been done here, retired. No, but I think that I, you know he he always need to be more active. I, that that would help him. Mm -hmm. But hey, guys, listen. Thanks for tuning in. Thank you. Uh, tune in next week. Uh, go to YouTube or, or go to the Punchline Live and go to YouTube and subscribe, share, like.
and ring the bizzle. Hit the bell icon and also share share the show, guys. Um, sharing the show it, it it helps us get the show out more, and it's a big favor to us. And um, we're we're doing a lot Thanks of other things. More. We're gonna we're gonna do a documentary with Mikey, which is gonna be huge. And we're doing a lot of little things yep. too. Uh, maybe we'll get Virgil Ortiz in there on it. Yeah, we should be able to. I, we're, I, we're, well, we're gonna be in Oxnard. Oh, we're gonna be in Oxnard anyway. Yeah. yeah. But, well, I mean, but he's in Riverside. Too, but yeah. we'll be in Riverside too. Exactly. We're gonna be all over. Also, um, what else we got? Oh, um, we're gonna get some great interviews in at the Lomachenko fight. Absolutely. So we'll get some great interviews and get you some great footage. And you can score the fight with us at the fight, right? Yeah. We'll score along with us and we'll even go we'll live. We'll have our cool, nice little yellow tablets. I'm not sure if mine's yellow, but. I hope it is. But we have blue cases. Thanks, Damon. Thank you, Damon. Damon. Uh, thank you, thank you, Joel. Appreciate it, bro. And uh, hey, thank you for everything. You guys are the reason we do this show, and we appreciate it. And um, have a good one. Keep the streets. <laughs>